Hello students, in this video we'll see how to find the volume of a parallel pipette. If we consider three linearly independent vectors, V, W, and U, what we can do is we can form a parallelogram with any two of them. Form the parallelogram generated by, let's just say, u and v. u and v. Okay? Easy enough to do. There's the vector v. There's the vector u. And of course, we can get a parallel copy of v over here, a parallel copy of u over here. There we go. We know what the area of this parallelogram is. The area of this parallelogram, the area is just going to be the length of the cross product of u and v. Well, we can note now that the cross product of u and v is a normal vector to this parallelogram. So that we should note. is normal to this plane. Now what we can do is we'll use the third vector, which is independent of those first two vectors, which means it's not in the same plane as u and v. So w does something like this. There's my vector w. Draw a parallel copy of w over here, a parallel copy of w over here, and a parallel copy of w over here. And I can draw the same parallelogram as below, right above it, and I form this box shape. This is called a parallel pipette. This is a parallel Now, the question becomes, is how do I find the volume of this? Well, it's going to be the area of the base times the height. So the volume is going to be the area of the base times height. Okay. From classical geometry, we know what the area of the base is. Let's return to our area of the base formula. The area of the base is going to be, well, the length of u times v is going to be the length of u times the length of v times the sine of theta. And now let's look over here. Now I can draw the height over here. So what's the height? Well, this vector over here is parallel to u cross v. And so we have over here is if I write an angle over here, theta. And th so the angle theta over here is this angle over here in the xy plane. And this is the same thing as we have to multiply this by the height. So that's one way we can represent the area of the base, but let's just leave it in this form. Let's leave this as u cross v for the time being times the height. Okay. So either one of those representations works. Now what we can do is we can say, well, what is this height over here? Well, if w is this hypotenuse over here of this triangle, and this angle over here, let's call that angle over there phi, phi is the angle between u cross v and w, so if phi is the angle between u cross v and w, then this height over here is going to be the length of w times the cosine of phi, because it's the adjacent angle over here. Now we know this is going to be this is the same thing as giving me the dot product of v. This is going to be u cross v dot w. And to make sure we have the right orientation, we'll put an absolute value around here to re represent the fact that it is a volume over here. So this is the triple scalar product of u, v, and w. This is the triple scalar product. And typically, with the triple scalar product, you have u dot v cross w. That's why I put absolute values around everything to make sure that the columns are in the right order. OK, let's see an example of how we would use this. So if we're given 
u. Let's say that u is going to be 1, 0, 2. Let's say that v will be negative 2 or positive 2, 1, negative 2. And let's say that w is going to be a 5, 0, and a 1. So the volume of the parallel pipe is spanned by these vectors. The volume of the parallel pipe spanned. Yeah, I think. by u, v, and w is going to be the triple scalar product, which is the determinant. So we can compute this triple scalar product by computing a determinant. So this is going to be the determinant of this matrix of 1, 0, 2, 2, 1, negative 2, and 5, 0, 1. And what we can do is we can expand along the third or the second column because there's a lot of zeros there. So this is a minus, that's a plus, and that's a minus. So if we expand along the second column, what I'll get is I'll get a plus 1 times the determinant of what I get when I punch out the row and column which one resides. So I'll have a 1, a 2, a 5, and a 1. Put absolute value around everything. So I'm going to have 1 minus 10. So this will be the absolute value of negative 9. We can see that the order actually matters here now because I have a negative 9. We want to make sure this is actually a volume. So the volume of this parallel pipette is going to be equal to 9. Thank you very much.